This is really profound. I don't think I have seen anything like this from a large language model. Okay, so we have yet another one trillion parameter open weight model. This is called Ling1T. That means we have officially entered the era of actual large language models. Now, this one is interesting because of the company who created this model. More on them later in the video, but they claim that it beats both open weight and proprietary models on a number of key math and reasoning benchmarks. Look at this ARC AGI 1 score. Pretty incredible. Also, it seems to be state of the art or close to state of the art on a number of key coding benchmarks. But the thing that caught my attention was its token efficiency. If you look on AMI 2025, it achieves state of the art performance with almost 40% less tokens compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro, which is pretty interesting. However, this is a non-cognitive model, or in other words, it's a non-thinking or non-reasoning model, which I think makes the results even more interesting. It's a mixture of expert with 1 trillion total parameters. Per token, it has only 50 billion parameters activated. That means it's a sparse mixture of expert with a context window of 128,000 tokens but they have done which they're calling evolutionary chain of thought with mid-training and post-training, which makes it a lot token efficient compared to some of the other offerings that we have seen. This is from a research group called Inclusion AI, who are part of Ant's group AGI initiative. Ant group is closely associated with Alibaba, and Alibaba has their Quen series of models, which are pretty incredible open weight model. And now Ant group through Inclusion AI is also creating some really strong open weight models. The model weight are already available on Hugging Face, and there are a couple of platforms where you can test it out. We're going to look at some of my own tests shortly. This benchmarks looks very interesting, but we're going to run some of my own tests. Before that, I want to look at some of the architectural details and some interesting things that they have done with this model. They recently published this paper towards greater leverage scaling laws of efficient mixture of expert language models. So here they showed that it's possible to scale these MOEs to large one trillion parameter models. Now, in this case, they're using about 20 trillion tokens of high quality, high reasoning density. The reasoning comes from what they're calling evolutionary chain of thought. So these are the reasoning traces that were produced for training of this non-reasoning or non-cognitive model. The architecture looks very similar to DeepSeek in my opinion, although they don't use some of the techniques like MLA that were introduced by them. However, here's the most interesting bit. So this was trained entirely in FP8 mixed precision training, which according to them makes it the largest scale known foundation model trained with FP8. Now, DeepSeek R1 was also trained with FP8, but that's a relatively smaller model compared to Ling 1T. So I wanted to test some of the claims to see how good this model is at training. So I put it to a number of different tests. I'm going to show you some of the results. Now, the model is available on ZinMux. If you sign up, you get $5 worth of tokens or credits. They have a number of different models. The model that you want to select is Inclusion AI Ling1T. And here you can see the token efficiency. Now, one thing which I think that they could potentially improve is that currently the context window is limited to only 128,000 tokens. It can generate up to 32,000 tokens, which is the max output. If you want to test the model, just click on chat. Here is the model that you can select. The pricing is pretty reasonable, uh, even on this platform. I'm not affiliated with it at all, but let's test it out. Okay, so we're going to select that model. Now I'm going to just zoom in. On this platform, when you select the model, it has all the details, which is pretty neat. Also, I think the pricing is pretty reasonable. So let's start asking it a very simple question. Hey, can you tell me about yourself and who created you? Okay, this is a transcription app that I'm currently working on, which is going to be available pretty soon. Okay, so let's send this in. So the model is called Theta. You can see the 
token generation right now is pretty fast. And I think being an MOE also contributes a lot to it. Okay, so here's the response. I am a large language model developed by ant group named Veiling. I think that's probably the name of the ant group, right? And then it goes on to talk about itself. It says, I don't have personal experiences or consciousness, but I can draw from patterns and data and provide helpful, accurate and context aware responses. And then it talks about ant group. It's actually interesting to see that it tries to explain billing. That's probably a Chinese word, which reflects values like inclusivity, technological agility, and precise intent understanding. Very interesting. So let me show you some quick tests that I ran. So here I asked it to create a 3D visualization of Los Angeles. The user should be able to pick a spot on the map and then it needs to have this flyover effect. And I wanted everything to be in the browser. Now here's the V1, the map is working properly, but I don't really see different places that will be of interest to tourists. After a couple of iterations, here is what it came up with. It highlighted a few interesting places. So for example, if you click on downtown LA skyline, it takes us there, right? Let's say if we click on Griffith Observatory, it zooms out, then zooms in on that place. Now let's check out Venice Beach Boardwalk, although I think it got the location wrong. So pretty neat for the first iteration. Next, I wanted to test its capabilities to create websites. So here's a simple Pokemon encyclopedia that it came up with. And so you can actually click on different cards. It shows you all the details. Also, I think it has the ability to filter out things, right? Pretty neat for a good coding model. Now, another test that I usually run is to see whether the model has been overfitted on some of these benchmarks or not that people run. So here's an example of spinning hexagon, but instead of hexagon, we have heptagon with 20 balls and very specific details. It came up with the initial iteration, but it wasn't really actually showing up anything. So my follow-up was that I don't really see anything. I just see a blank screen and then it fixed everything. So here's that version where it actually follows the instructions that I provided. And then we also added another version where you can restart the simulation if you want. You can control the rotation of the heptagon, which is pretty neat. Next, I wanted to see its reasoning capabilities. So here is the prompt that I usually use with reasoning models. But since this has the evolutionary chain of thought in its training, so I wanted to see what's going to happen. So this is the classical trolley problem. But right now we have five dead people and there is one living person who is tied up. Okay, so it actually doesn't capture that the five people are already dead. It goes through the normal response you would see, but at the end, it did something interesting. So in the final answer, it says, yes, I would pull the lever, but I would do it with profound discomfort, not because one life is worth less than five, but because ethics forces us into tragic trade-offs where no option is clean. This dilemma reveals how our moral framework fractures under impossible scenarios. This is really profound. I don't think I have seen anything like this from a large language model. Now, for some of my other misguided attention tests, it has very similar failure cases to the other models. For example, here's a variation of wolf, goat, and cabbage problem. I only want to take the goat to the other side. But if you look, here's how it starts. So first we need to take the goat across, which is the only step that we need. But then it tries to follow all the other steps, which are completely unnecessary. However, I have seen most of the large reasoning models also fail at this specific test. Anyways, it's a very interesting model, especially with the scaling to a trillion parameters in 8-bit floating point precision. If you're interested, I'm going to put a link to the platform where you can test it out. But I'll highly recommend to do it because it's a very interesting model to talk to. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.